Well, Kyle, it's time for a React sequel. Yes, it's time to return to our most requested React content, Joe Cat's Final Fantasy XIV Crap Guides. And today, we'll be enjoying Joe Cat's Crap Guide to Final Fantasy XIV Healers. And I imagine, much like last time, we'll be having a nice little chat about our experience with healing, or, in my case, being healed. Because I don't heal. I don't like healing. I don't like healing at all, Kyle. And I bet we'll probably have a dialogue about that today. Ah, oh, this is my neck of the woods. I love healing. I love feeling special. The guy who heals. Burning crusade. Holy priest. Leveling back in the day. No multi-specking. Final Fantasy was really intimidating because of all the F key business and no add-ons. But before we move on, normally, this is where we'd remind you that you can do things like subscribe to us or support us in our YouTube video making endeavors. But... We're reacting to Joe Cat's hard work, so go support Joe Cat. I love power, and I love feeling powerful. It strokes my bigly wiggly and forces lesser beings to bow down to my awesome might, lest they taste my boot between their gums. Nothing has ever given me the same rush of adrenaline than knowing that everybody has to submit to my whims for their own safety. It makes my brain do the goody-good chemicals and allows me to feel as though I have control over this truly unfortunate reality that the universe is slowly careening into an eventual heat death and there's nothing anybody can do about it as we are inconsequential specks in this cruel and uncaring universe. But none of that matters, because look at this, I can pull my party members into a pit that kills them. I find that hilarious. Welcome to a crap guy to Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> His writing is so good. It's so quick. It's, it's not a. It's not the joke a minute because his videos are too short. It's like the joke every five seconds. It's so true. We're on such a power trip healing. You need us. All right, explain to me the the power fantasy of of a healer because uh, I don't I don't understand it. The, to me, it doesn't seem powerful to be healing. So back in the day. When there was no server crossplay, it was about being famous. You logged on, you had this friends list of people who needed a healer. There wasn't any looking for group tools. So you were the guy when you logged in. And you would stand in the middle of Shatrath or whatever city was major at the time and just say, looking for more, and people would pile upon you. Tanks? Yeah, they couldn't do it without you, but really, I mean, come on, like samurais have arm's length. They can't do it without you. Kyle, I can't help but think of multiple times where I've done it without you while you laid dead on the floor and I just pop tank and cooldowns and laugh. I mean, that's fa okay, well, that's maybe this is where people complain about games getting too easy. Ultimately, like leveling content and getting your dailies done should not be so restrictive. And you should be able to complete that content a decent amount of time, even if I, the healer, go down. So, yeah, I agree with it in time. But, you know, we're talking like hard content. You can't do without me. But then there's usually more than one healer. Then you get divided up by who's healing the group and who's doing the tanking. And the tank healing is really boring. And the group healing is really exciting. At least that's how I always felt about it. The greatest power of all is the power to have control over people's lives, which is why the healer is the most likely party member to have a god complex. Right behind main tanks, <laughs> mentors, and anybody who's an omnicrafter. You are the most important person in the party, as you, along with the tank, are responsible for keeping the party alive by kissing their boo-boos and slapping the bitch who made the boo-boo. That's right, as a healer, you do have to deal damage as well. Man, but it's called a healer, and healers are supposed to heal, right? <laughs> okay, hold on, pause it. How true is that, man? How true is it that you actually got to deal damage in Final Fantasy XIV? Because I have been told many times that is a major difference differentiator of what healing is like in this MMO versus other MMOs. And with you and me, it's always it's always World of Warcraft we're comparing it to. That's where we came from. That's our basis of what came before. Yes. And that's one of the things I love about Final Fantasy is we're all racing together to defeat the content. And the faster the boss goes down, the better those tank cooldowns are the less the DPS have to do, and ultimately the less we have to heal and manage our mana. So the tanks and the healers all contribute to DPS. In World of Warcraft, you never cast a angry spell at all. In fact, it would be a huge burden on your mana in some expansions. But for the most part, it's just not how the game's designed. Of course, DPS do more damage than a healer can, and more damage than the tank can, but in general, like... Any class can level at around the same speed, and everyone does, in general, the same amount of DPS. And I find that puzzle way more fascinating. And I feel like I'm contributing tactically to the fight we're having, rather than just beating down those damage bars. 
That plays into like rezzing, which I find very interesting in this game too. Healer's job is not necessarily to heal the party, but rather to keep them alive. And yes, there's a difference. There's gonna be a lot of downtime between heals, and you bet your aflatus rumpus that you're making the fight take longer than it has to if you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs waiting for your next chance to cast cure. What do you do when the party's full health? What do you do when the party's full health? Or even halfway up and standing? DPS the bad guys. He's right. So, so this is- Oh, so this is why I always feel like I'm about to die. Yes, so one of the big key differences here in Final Fantasy is that you don't have to be full health all the time because tanks actually have mitigation that is on a way shorter cooldown. And with tank busters having visuals and such, the tank is responsible for their own health way more than World of Warcraft. Pardon me, I was thinking about mechanics. I let your health go down way farther than I ever would in WoW because it's way too dangerous in that environment. You're being slammed for these huge chunks all the time and you have dedicated healers to keep you maxed out. That's the game they've designed, and there's nothing really wrong with that. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yeah, because I, I feel like I've mostly gotten used to it, but every now and then, uh, particularly when I'm not running with you, uh, I'll get a healer that lets me go even further than I've kind of gotten used to, and I'm like, what, what's, what's, what's going on here? But I'm usually okay. This isn't some useless contribution, like you're not bored. And certainly there are times when you're healing lower level content in World of Warcraft where you just have nothing to do, so you DPS. But you know in the background in your head like how useless it is and it contributes to that boredom. Here I have an actual AOE that's doing something without having to spec into it. Here I have an actual single target DPS that's doing something. There's a reason for me to keep my dot up on the enemy because it contributes something. And that's really fun. I healed enough in World of Warcraft to kind of understand like the complete lack of damage going on there. So that sounds cool. I can see the I can see the appeal. And then you have this contribution between your on cooldown and off cooldown abilities, which means if things are going really well, you only use your supportive off cooldown abilities and all your cooldown abilities, your spinny ones, go into DPS. So you're actually you call, wait, wait, when you say spinny ones, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to understand Kyle terminology here. Do, do you mean like it's got a long countdown radial? Yeah, yeah. As so, the cooldown goes. So, you, know, you know, your main bar and like everything you can cast all the time and it all together goes, woo, 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 woo. Yeah, the global cooldown, right? Oh, so that's what you mean by spinning once. Yeah, so when you are in a good scenario and everything's going well, you are actually playing DPS all the time. It's just that your off cooldown, your instant casts, all go to supporting the tank. I'm a huge nerd about healing. I've been healing since 2005 in World of Warcraft. I find the whole puzzle that Final Fantasy submits fascinating. So I'm, I'm, I'm just geeking out because I get to share. No, I don't pay your sub. But when the fight takes too long, it starts to rub all up on everybody's nerves. And when you hit and game serves you right when the boss will wipe the party because you couldn't beat and rage. Sure, you're for the most part keeping the party. <laughs> See, that's the description. That's what I'm talking about. Like, that's the puzzle that Final Fantasy presents, is we all have to contribute to the DPS. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I'm, I'm not against it. If anything, this is selling me on on healing. Pretty alive with a variety of healing, utility spells, some regen, some shields, but an equal amount of time you're casting those, you're also throwing in some extra DPS when time allows. Remember, DPSing is just mitigating future damage. And if you're able to kill the current <laughs> wave of dungeon mobs before they deplete the tank's HP, which by the way is going That's to regen genius. to full by the time you reach the next mob pull anyway, what does it matter how low their HP gets? So yes, DPS when time allows. When does time allow? Well, I know you're scared of independence and thinking by yourself, but that's going to be a balancing <laughs> act you'll have to figure out. However, my rule of thumb is the minimum amount of HP a party member has to be at is one. But if that's too scary we wear we for your weedle fingies ask yourself will the enemy's next attack make your party member fall on their ass if yes heal so that it doesn't if no time to become a glare mage mother as long as they're alive and you're playing the content you're doing your job right there is one caveat to doing your job right and that's that everybody will hate you for it literally by healing you start to generate a lot of aggro from the bad guys so if you ever decide to heal before mob pulls in dungeons it's important to stick close to the tank like an i've never I've never had any aggro problems in this game. Oh, no, that's not true. That's not true at all, actually. It's so not true. The, the heal you... over time is dangerous as hell. Every time, man. Every fucking time. So, like, <laughs> but, but when the fight's actually going on, it's not like I have to stop healing in order for the enemy to calm down. But, yeah, the heal over time makes everything so mad when you pull. When I was learning how to tank, when I first picked up Dark Knight and you were running me through stuff on your Astrologian, I was constantly stressed out. My anxiety was through the roof, dude, because every time I would make a pull, 
everything that wasn't the thing that I hit first would just run to your ass and just go for it. And there, is there, do any other, I know this is, we're talking about healers. Does anyone know, do any of the tanking jobs have an AOE taunt? Because the Dark Knight, at least so far, doesn't have one. And uh, I would like one. Well, you got your AOE damage abilities, right? I think it's more on me and my carryover from World of Warcraft, which is always have regen on the tank. Always have your dots up and you should have those rolling before you engage. Here, it's just dangerous. It was a timing thing, too. Like, in the early days when I was learning how to tank, it was about, like, timing, like, when I would press my AoE and when it would actually pop so that as the, the dudes that wanted to go murder you were dragging past me, that they would actually get smacked by my first AoE. I've gotten a lot better at, at that, about that. You've also gotten a lot better about just hugging me yeah. all the time <laughs> during, during trash pulls. I think Final Fantasy used to do aggro a lot differently and a lot more old school in that oh, way. Oh yeah, we got a lot of messages about the like the history and the evolution of threat or aggro, whatever the hell, enmity, the thing I can't stand saying in our last reacts video for Joe Cat because we did the one for tanking. So the other thing about why I'm more cool being up on you now is when we did our raids with our community for the first time, I noticed how close the healers were. So in Final Fantasy, your AOE heals all radiate out from you. Where in World of Warcraft, you have AOE heals that you target upon somebody and then it explodes off them. So healers are actually right up on the butt of the bosses in Final Fantasy so that all your AOEs are doing stuff and actually hitting the tank who's on the other side of the boss in the crotch, which means... It's actually more interactive and more dangerous because healing in dungeons where I don't have to work as hard or healing in the past in World of Warcraft was more about like finding the most scenic place in the room. Like I could go stand in the bleachers. I could go find a cool rock to get up on top. I had a really awesome view of everything and it was very cinematic, but I was way removed from the boss's danger unless he had particular mechanics or ads that were going to spawn behind me because I chose the door that they all come through. As as an ex hunter, man, I I feel you there. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're describing. I would I would find a nice little rock, and it's like this is my rock. I'm gonna hang out here. Y'all have fun up there. But because even the hunters in the equivalent in this game have AOE buffs, they'd be giving out from them. Everybody's kind of in it together, and more in the danger and in the zone. And I think that makes for a more interactive environment than. Standing way, way back and slapping those health bars. ERP or sticks to Vieira's wearing two B thigh highs. Especially if you throw on a region and suddenly 800 mobs crash through the wall with is. a yeah, hot fried yeah. fairies cookbook. You can still do <laughs> it, but you should know what you're getting into. Like live streaming and hoping that anybody will watch. As for your limit break, we heard you like healing, so we put more healing in your Timing. healing so you can heal while you heal. Unfortunately, you won't be using any limit break aside from LB3 because LB1 and 2 just heal the party, and you already have plenty of band aids and popsicles to do that on your own. LB3, however, is so potent in healing it resurrects everybody in the. Oh, party. it's so beautiful, too. Look at look at that astrologian. One. Look at astrologian. Yeah. yeah, no, dude, I get it. I there's a lot of times where I don't understand why you are in love with something. I completely understand your obsession with astrologian. It is freaking gorgeous. It is so beautiful. All healers tend to be reduced down to druids with leaves and priests with lasers. Yellow light, Kyle. Yellow light. It's I, not that, you know, being a planetarium for every single spell cast is unique and different, but I just, I think Astrologian's just gorgeous. Party back from the dead instantaneously, but they will have to do the thriller afterwards, so it's best to be safe for when you at least have enough people to make a backup <laughs> dancing crew. For the flavors of healer, we have three boomers and the new kid on the block who bought a Glock and has a TikTok. The white mage is the most straightforward. You heal when a buddy is hurt and you attack when they're not. Just about everything in your arsenal is all about feeding them so much it'll make an inflation artist blush in embarrassment. You're also equipped with the best AoE skill in the entire game and the ability to never run out of mana unless you're really really bad best of all when your buddies get hurt you can heal them to harness their blood for the blood lily but let's say you want to play white mage but you like tarot readings and star signs like a suburban okay <laughs> before he totally goes off on astrologian i really have no interest in white mage and i had no interest in white mage because you know i've done the holy priest thing and the story was kind of like go heal the elements I, I'm getting more and more bought into the Final Fantasy aesthetic, and so White Mage is a little appealing to me, if for no other reason than uh, I've seen a few of them with pretty, to me, as a 
newcomer to Final Fantasy for the most part. Fairly classic looking Final Fantasy robage. They do look good out there. And, you know, the staff looks good and, you know, their whole kind of aesthetic. I get it if you want to be healer number one. Don't want anyone arguing with what you're going to be doing on that battlefield. And compared to Astrologian, I don't think it has as many, like, side gimmicks, which would be the insulting way to call it. But, you know, mini games to play on the side, your macro. However, in PvP, for some reason, White Mage shoots this gigantic laser across the whole battlefield. And it hurts like hell. And I want one. So that's what I've been dying to. Yes, that, that huge, like, pink, purple just thing that crosses across in a big beam. It's amazing. It looks really fun. Heal the whole time. Otherwise, support people, run away, and then just blow up the enemy with a giant laser. A suburban woman in her mid to late 20s. Astrologian is probably for you. <laughs> you draw cards that will enhance the abilities of your party members, and you fill the arena with enough space dust and constellations that you'll need five layers of sunglasses to see. Taking this job will also teach you how to build a bomb. <laughs> Don't worry, it's friendly. Wait, wait, what? You can make a bomb? <laughs> oh, no, no, it's, I mean, sort of. So you put out, I, I don't know how to describe it lore-wise, you put out a ball of light that you can detonate early for less effect, but if you let it go the full time, it detonates for maximum effect. So does it deal damage or healing? Both. And it's quite pretty. Ah. It, it's another explosion planetarium business. I love the busyness of the cards. I wish they would have leaned harder into the Yu-Gi-Oh element of it, like gone full dual disc, Kaiba, collect your cards, travel the world, Gwent Witcher 3. Instead, you actually travel the world and you look at the stars and you see the actual constellations up in the stars, which is amazing and just a vulgar amount of flexing that they put actual constellations in the night sky in Final Fantasy and then made a class based around going and looking at those constellations. But, it, you know, I think the storyline, I would love it if you had to play Magic the Gathering more. I'm still trying to wrap my head around uh, living through bombing your party. It's It sounds wonderful. Scholar is a weirdo who used to hang out with all the bad DPS kids, but decided to turn their life around when they met a nice girl who supports them in their new hobby. Only problem is, she knows nothing <laughs> about your hobby, and you have to keep correcting her on fandom trivia. They're all about putting shields and defensive buffs that protect the party from taking damage in the first place. That shields way they fun. can guess what? DPS even more. Also, your girlfriend can get sick. <laughs> <laughs> so you could be one of these right now. I, I picked up my job crystal. That's as far as I've gone with Scholar. Because I just historically have not really enjoyed healing outside of PvP in World of Warcraft. I just really haven't bothered even scratching the surface of it in, in Final Fantasy yet. Um, but yeah, I, I went and got my fairy. That, that's that's like the, you know, spoiler alert, that's the opening part of the job quest. But I've, now I've learned from people in our stream, people in the comments below, and now Joe Cat, that it's Scholar's much more about damage mitigation. And the healer I've always loved in World of Warcraft is Disc Priest, which has been a very about varying degrees of damage mitigation, uh, depending on what era of World of Warcraft you were playing at Disc Priest, but it's always been my favorite healer over there. So now that I know it's more about damage mitigation, I am slightly more interested, although again, so, this is so personal, but I was more about PvP healing. And in Final Fantasy 14, who the hell I don't even who the hell knows how anything works because you get all new abilities. <laughs> so I don't know. You gotta sit down and crunch through it. And yeah, that's it's not easy to say that if you like the aesthetic in PvE, that you will like that exact aesthetic in PvP. I'm learning that because I'm learning Red Mage right now, and PvP is not my jam on that class. But I really like the PvE side of things. Yeah, I didn't like it on Dark Knight at all. I was just like, oh, I hate this. I'm getting out of there. So the selling point is the Thick Fairy. However, <laughs> you glanced over this. I'm not much... For fairies, they show the art on the Final Fantasy website. They're standing there. They got like a, you know, a graduation hat on or something with their big robes and the book and the fairy. There's a barrier to entry for me there. We're getting over the lawn decoration aesthetic of fairies. And finally, the new kid on the block, the sage. A scholar who decided to stop being nice and pick up a gun. <laughs> that shoots lasers! <laughs> like scholar, they also put shields and protective buffs on their party members so they can spend more time shooting lasers! How do they do this? After seeing Alphano change to the job, my guess is the Nullists are liquefied carbuncles. Rest in peace, Carby. <laughs> and now you know oh, how to play no. healer. You're <laughs>
<laughs> All right. I did the starting quest for Sage, and it's actually a really, really cute idea. So, you know, healing stones, right? Have, have, you, have you been acupuncture or anything like that and had stones placed upon you? Uh, my biggest phobia in this world is needles. So, no, okay. I have you not could, been to acupuncture. You could probably still go to one of those places, not get the needles and still get the healing stones. They're just round stones with like that are heated and they can be placed upon your chakras, I think. I don't know. I'm not an expert. But the idea being that the peoples of the past used healing stones imbued with magic in order to heal people. But with the advances of technology, they attach those stones to drones and now they shoot them out at people and they fly around. Also, why not? They attached laser guns to the healing stones <laughs> so they can shoot lasers while they're healing. So you're, you got like mecha guns that shoot health, but can also do damage? It's so much lasers. It is very hard to differentiate the spells because they are literally all lasers. If, if it's damage mitigation and no fairy on top of the fact that you have... Fantasy guns, that's more enticing to me. Yeah, I think so. You're welcome. Oh, that's, that's the end. <laughs> that's all we had left. That's all we got. <laughs> all right, Kyle, you get one recommendation. What healing job should I do first? I mean, like properly do first. I know I picked up my scholar stone, but that's it. That's all I did. Am I right? Does the scholar get levels from your summoner for yes. the low level class part of it? No, your 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 job stones are essentially synced and level, is my understanding. I don't know the technical particulars of how it works, because you still got to go do your job quests yeah. if you want your abilities that are locked behind those job quests. But whatever level your summoner is, that's the level of your job stone for your scholar, and vice versa. I know you like summoner, so my like convenient. It's right around the corner. Why not shop there? Recommendation is well, why not try out that? But sounds like. You, you want to go to a good restaurant, you know, not just because it's there. And I think Sage sounds like your business. It's got the the deeps. It's got the shielding. And if you liked this priest, which who doesn't like dealing damage to heal? I mean, Sage just sounds really nice. If I had to go heal today, Sage or White Mage, because I kind of I like older flavored classes and MMOs as well. I tend to like a little bit of like old MMO clunk. And I don't know if that's what White Mage has, but they seem like such a basic rendition of what a healer is. I might I might enjoy it. That'd be my assumption, too. Astrologian has this whole card on the side business, which I find really fun. And I love the aesthetic. I wish I could have played Astrologian during the time when all the cards were unique. Problem was, though, you could use certain cards to like troll people or give people the wrong card to mess with them. So they reduced it down to a basic buff. That's interesting. Anyway, let me know what you think I should play as my first healer. I think Astral Legend's a bottom for me. I think I have pretty much zero interest. I think they're really pretty. The card mechanic is a major turnoff for me. Yeah, it's it's busy work, but it's really fun busy work. I really like it. Hey, thanks to Joe Cat for making these wonderful guides, and thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, the last one was super popular, and the probably the most common comment below was, do the rest! So here we are. We're getting to the rest. Anyways, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to get all of the latest uploads from Kyle and me. We have new uploads every Wednesday morning and streams every Monday afternoon and Thursday evening. So join us for those. Until next time, everybody. GG. GG.